Hi, my name is Pedro Reyes and I will tell you today about the three pieces that address the issue of uh, guns and uh, I have tried to tackle this problem uh, from the, so, you know, what we, you could call uh, socially engaged art or, or social practice projects. The first of these projects uh, started in 2008 uh, as a project called Palas por Pistolas, which is a, could be translated as shovels for guns. And it basically consisted in a call that was made uh, the, as a campaign to collect weapons, uh, which w we made a series of TV ads uh, inviting the population of Culiacán, which is a city west of Mexico, uh, asking them to bring to the city hall uh, a weapon that they could trade in exchange for an electric appliance or other objects that we have gathered with the help of sponsors. Uh, and then we collected out of that campaign 1,527 uh, weapons that then were uh, crushed by a steamroller and they were then melted and made into the same number of shovels, 1,527 shovels. Uh, that then were used to plant the same number of trees, uh, 1,527 uh, uh, trees. So for every gun that existed before, now there is a tree. And here the idea of the operation was that very simple arithmetic of replacing an agent of death for an agent of life. What I have learned out of this uh, experience was that having a physical object, in this case the, the shovel, uh, allowed for people to gather around an activity. And that activity was a, a community day. Sometimes it was organized with uh, the help of neighbors or through a, a local museum or local school. And a, these plantings that had happened in many cities around the world, but especially both in Mexico and the United States, uh, were very important for because they offered an opportunity for families and for groups, um, communities, to uh, be on the street and or on public spaces and address the, the subject of gun violence and uh, the problem of the proliferation of guns. Mexico is, uh, uh, has a very dangerous neighbor, which is the United States. The United States is a very dangerous country for Mexico because of the gun availability that exists there. You have to take into account that 62% of all weapons sold worldwide are uh, bought by civilians in the United States. So it's like as if we were next to a neighbor that had built a pool above your apartment and it's leaking to your home, only that what is leaking into Mexico is gone. So we have a big problem of uh, weapon trafficking from the United States into Mexico. So. Um, the second project that I did we, uh, trying to address this issue was called Disarm and basically was another uh, uh, use of the metal used by weapons. Um, after doing Palas por Pistolas, the, the, I, I was approached by uh, 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 an office of the government that told me that there was uh, 6,700 weapons that were sized to criminal groups and they were to be destroyed. And then uh, they offered me and asked me if they, I wanted to do shovels with it, uh, with them. So instead of doing shovels, I decided to try a different thing. And 
to do musical instruments. The shovels have showed this uh, community or opportunity for community gathering and a musical instrument does if the same, which is to bring people around a uh, musical performance and uh, it is also a transformation of a, a agent of death into an agent of life. No? Music brings people together and that's something that <coughs> taking the guns and taking the rifles and the machine guns, etc., and cutting them and, you know, like a, making holes and working a little bit as a caveman, trying to extract uh, what they could be uh, sounds out of these parts became a very nice uh, collaboration with uh, musicians and, 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 and blacksmiths and welders, etc., where we started to produce a large number of iterations uh, and actually built several orchestras that since then have been traveling as a, as a, as a, as a project that uh, that is very interesting because the musical instrument all the time brings new creation. No? Uh, what I do is that I s that you know that the musical instrument goes to one city, and then in that city, uh, local musicians uh, develop uh, a music performance and. Uh, and this always a surprise to see what is this new uh, uh, music that will come out of it. For me, doing these projects with guns is also important because often blame goes to that who pulls the trigger. And always the, 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 the person who lives in a ghetto or in a kind of a... a, a, a by neighborhood is the, the person who gets the blame. But often, the, I mean, like a, we lose out of uh, focus that the real problem is the weapon industry in itself. The persons who manufacture weapons and the person and the industry and the people who invest in this industry are making money out of an industry of death that uh, causes suffering and fuels crime and war around the world, and is the main and the main reason reason why uh, uh, there's so much uh, death and suffering out of guns is because governments are hijacked by its military uh, and are always persuaded to spend more money, and money that could go towards education or towards health is often hijacked by the defense sector uh, in, and in order to boost sales for weapon companies. And uh, you know, like all the big countries that do uh, uh, weapon manufacturing, like, uh, you know, like uh, France, uh, England, uh, Germany, uh, China, the United States, uh, uh, Canada, Austria, Italy, uh, uh, Russia, uh, they they have a humongous uh, weapon industry that uh, is totally unaccountable for uh, all the death that these weapons co cause around the world. So uh, my hope is that uh, that I want to drive uh, draws a certain attention that the that the weapon industry is the enemy and. And, uh, and that led to a third installment of, of these projects, which was called Amendment to the Amendment. Uh, every time that, uh, you know, like in Mexico, we are aware that part of the, uh, that we cannot solve our problem of gun violence if <coughs> alone. It has to happen also in collaboration with the United States because of, uh, we share a massive border that, uh, and you know, like, uh, unless, there is a change in, uh, in gun control and gun availability in the United States. It's hard for us to curb the number of guns that are in our territory. So I made this project called Amendment to the Amendment, which uh, is an exercise where 200 people participate. 
um, in a, an exercise to rewrite the Second Amendment. The Second Amendment is a very short one that says the, uh, a well-regulated militia necessary for the existence of a free state, the bear to wear, bear, the bear to the right to bear weapons should not be infringed. And that is, uh, and every time that you try to do some kind of a, a change in policy towards gun availability, uh, the discussion gets stuck because of the Second Amendment. So instead of thinking what would be the right interpretation for this legislation that is 200 years old, the exercise is about how to fully rewrite the Second Amendment. And people are invited to participate in groups where each group, each team has 20 minutes to come up with a new version of the Second Amendment. And after that, uh, those versions are read and you see all the different ideas that, that come out of this process. So the idea is to use uh, uh, workshops to change legislation and to propose and to open the discussion that actually the Second Amendment needs a rewrite, which is something that has to enter public imagination. And uh, that's those three projects are kind of a different takes on a civil, in, on the on a same problematic. Uh, I think that what is in, important to acknowledge is that culture plays a big role uh, in advertisement in advertising guns you know like in films and TV and comic books and uh, 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 video games etc uh, guns are often portrayed as something sexy and something cool but without ever acknowledging the harm that they do uh, uh, by leaving people wounded or dead, dead. and uh, and that is something that uh, that culture has been in like kind of a complicit to a certain degree on uh, making guns popular. Uh, so also, uh, I believe that we can, we can reverse engineer that process and do culture that uh, shows the need to uh, to also acknowledge that being in a community or being in a society free of weapons should be a human right. Uh, thank you very much.